Since he first appeared on television screens in 1969, Scooby-Doo has starred in several shows, often helping to solve mysteries and eat plenty of food along the way. And one that has managed to stand out is Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Debuting on Cartoon Network in 2010, while the show did use a Monster of the Week format, it also featured an overarching storyline as Scooby and the Mystery Gang try to figure out why the town of Crystal Cove attracts so many people dressing up as ghosts and monsters. The characters experienced a certain amount of development and evolved as they learned about the town's history. Things did not go back to the status quo after Culprit was unmasked, and some of these mysteries even have lasting effects on the overall storyline. The mystery gang might encounter problems that they still have to figure out episodes later, and which are not revealed for a while. The main characters themselves are fleshed out either in humorous ways or with lasting emotional effects. That's not to say they don't have their classic trademarks. Shaggy and Scooby-Doo's massive appetites remain a running gag in Mystery Incorporated, while Velma is still the smartest member of the group. However, then you have elements like Velma being more sarcastic in the show with quite a biting sense of humor. My favorite character in Mystery Incorporated is, believe it or not, Fred. His love for building traps is partly played for laughs, but we also see how pivotal this is to his personality and his problem-solving skills. His on-again, off-again relationship with Daphne is also written in a clever way, and he's shown as not always having the best way of responding to her affections. Speaking of romantic relationship, the show early attempted to pair up Shaggy and Velma. This oddly creates a love triangle of Scooby as a battle for Shaggy's affections. Personally, I was not the biggest fan of the subplot, as it mostly descended into teenage drama, and Velma constantly trying to change Shaggy for superficial reasons was not the best look. Thankfully, this storyline was eventually dropped, and the only time it's ever brought up in the second season is as a joke. Honestly, I thought the sweetest relationship is one Scooby forms with a dog he meets in the second season. The voice cast also shined here, having already become comfortable playing the mystery gang before. Of course, you had Frank Welker still voicing Fred after all these years and capturing Fred's joy as he talks about traps and mystery solving. Welker also voiced Scooby, who has a bigger vocabulary here than we're accustomed to seeing, but nonetheless more than doing the job of following Don Messick's footsteps. Grey Delal brought the right amount of spunk to this interpretation of Daphne, while Mindy Cohn suited herself well to Velma's personality here, nailing the sarcastic tone of her remarks. Mystery Incorporated was notable for bringing in Matthew Lillard to voice Shaggy after playing the role in the live-action movies. He was one of the best parts of those films, and he more than slipped into Shaggy's pants here, even becoming the official voice from then on. And in a nice passing the torch moment, Casey Kasem voiced Shaggy's father, which ended up being his last role. It's great that Lillard and Kasem got to voice act with each other at least once. Crystal Cove itself has a lot of personalities. We get to know many of the townsfolk and how it operates. I love the idea of some of the residents actually being pleased with the different monsters who show up to wreak havoc as they see them as a boost to their economy. This includes the mayor who continually berates Fred for wanting to stop the monsters, which like many plot elements is more than just a running joke. There's also the sheriff who is constantly annoyed at always arresting people who turn out to not be the ones responsible. He's hilariously voiced by Patrick Warburton who has won the standouts of the cast. A fellow student named Marcy, or as she's cruelly nicknamed, Hot Dog Water, occasionally pops up from time to time and eventually plays a major role in the story. And in another nod to the live-action movie, she's voiced by Linda Cardellini, so it's fitting that through this character we get hints about Velma's sexuality. I know people have joked for years that Velma is a lesbian or bisexual, but it's pretty obvious here, even if the show does not come right out and say it, this being a Cartoon Network show from the early 2010s. Throughout the show, a couple of mysterious figures are also watching the gang and waiting to make the right move, which is nicely developed over the course of the larger storyline. The mysteries themselves show a lot of creativity with the monsters that invade the town, although it's not that difficult to figure out who the perpetrator is. Hmm, I wonder if it's one of the three new characters they introduce in this episode. Usually they have some sort of grudge against someone or are just trying some money-making scheme. However, there are episodes where they throw a curveball at you and don't go for the obvious reveal, along with giving the culprit other motivations beyond the expected ones. It is remarkable how the masked culprit is able to make their costume so lifelike and technologically advanced. Even when Velma or the culprit reveals how they did it, it's still impressive. But that's cartoon logic for you. The writers also make it clear what their main influences are with some of the references here. There are episodes that borrow from popular culture, particularly horror movies and mystery stories. There's an episode inspired by Saw, while another features an author mauled after H.P. Lovecraft. Writer Harlan Ellison even voiced himself on the show. One particularly overt homage is to Twin Peaks. Scooby has a few dreams, which send him to the famed Red Room from that show, with the artist replicating its exact appearance. Michael J. Anderson also guest starred as a character similar to the one he played on Twin Peaks. 
Then there's an episode which begins with a recreation of the opening of the 1984 adaptation of Dune. This is just a hunch, but I think the people behind Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated might be fans of David Lynch. The show also includes a bunch of references to other Hannibal Barrow shows, which are cleverly woven in. The not every episode, which avoids turning Mystery Incorporated into an HB Easter egg hunt, and makes their appearances that much more special. Some of these are just in the background, like in Teenage Pebbles and Bam Bam. And then you have ones which figure more prominently in the plot. There's an episode where Scooby is sick in bed and has a dream involving other sidekick characters from Hanna-Barbera shows like Captain Caveman and Jabbajaw. It's even animated in the exact style of 70s HB series, with the artist perfectly recreating the look of those shows. Then there's another episode which has the mystery gang getting involved in an adventure with Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt, although this one felt more like a backdoor pilot for a potential Blue Falcon show. And there are of course nods to the Scooby-Doo franchise itself, like Velma's parents owning a museum with statues of the monsters featured in the original series. We also get a few appearances from the music band the Hex Girls, while the most fun recurring character from Scooby lore is Vincent Van Gogh from The Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Depicted here as an actor from Shaggy and Scooby's favorite horror movies, there are quite a few enjoyable storylines, and he's delightfully voiced by Maurice LaMarche, trying his best Vincent Price impression. Meanwhile, almost every episode features some comical variation in the famous meddling kids line, which is actually fitting, because that was only ever said a few times on Scooby-Doo Are You? What's also great about Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated is there are actual stakes. Even though many of these monsters are just people in costumes, they nonetheless pose a threat and multiple times do create problems for the mystery gang. Then there's an evil parrot who serves as a recurring villain and is quite cunning in his methods in trying to attain all the pieces in an ancient magical disc. Most of the second season revolves around the necessity of the gang getting all these pieces instead of the parrot and his cohorts. A lot of the imagery does push the TVY7 rating as far as Cartoon Network allowed the creators to, and there are quite a few episodes that feature unsettling scenes. The last episode especially has moments that heighten the horror of the situation. Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated lasted for two seasons and 52 episodes, which does make it one of the longer-running shows in the franchise. The intention was always to have the show last this long, although co-creator Mitch Watson has said in interviews that if Cartoon Network had ordered another season, he would have been happy to do it. I think Mystery Incorporated more than works as a complete story, though. Plus, the way it ended and what's implied felt like an appropriate way to say goodbye to this version of the Mystery Gang. I think the series did an impressive job of combining the classic traits of the characters while also adding onto their personalities and taking them to new places. The overarching storyline created plenty of intrigue as the Mystery Gang slowly learns more about why Crystal Cove is the way it is. The humor delivers the individual monsters of the week, and their culprit showcase a lot of imagination and the setting in plenty of atmosphere and memorable personalities beyond the leads. I would definitely put Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated up there with Zombie Island and a pup named Scooby-Doo as one of my favorite entries in the long-running adventures of these mystery-solving teenagers and the hungry talking dog. See you next time.